the question becomes which you know uh, altcoins or layer ones are worth their salt and worth paying attention to now this comes down to you right i think everybody watching here today some of you guys already no, okay, I'm really into Phantom, I'm really into Hex, I'm really into Atom, I'm really into Dot, whatever it is that you're really looking at out there in the market, you probably already have one or two coins that you're like, okay, I'm ride or die with this coin and I think it's really gonna survive the bear market, right? Um, but for people who might be newer to the space, right, when in doubt, buy ETH. So make sure the majority of your portfolio is in ETH. And then once you start understanding a little bit by little bit about these other ecosystems that are either currently existing or building out and other trends, then you can start to maybe get a little fancy here. But I really want to focus on just the keep it simple, stupid strategy, which is let's focus on layer one. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Bitcoin is the trust layer of the crypto space, right? Um, meaning that everybody trusts um, Bitcoin enough to not die except for Peter Schiff. Um, and he doesn't even matter anyways. So um, it's never going away. It's here. This is why Bitcoin controls the price action of the market, right? But for Ethereum, I would say this is our speculation layer um, of crypto, uh, but also application layer, right? If we're looking at it from a technological uh, perspective, right? Um, this is where probably you have um, some of the safest activity going on um, in general crypto and, and the most activity, right? But Ethereum itself, without the other coins built on top of Ethereum, right, is where you want to you, you want to focus on the token itself in terms of speculation, in terms of long term investment. Then we go to okay, well we have BNB. I would say nothing in its ecosystem is really all that worthwhile. Not nothing, but not a lot of coins in its ecosystem are very worthwhile, right? It's just the BNB token itself. Cool. I would say it's relatively conservative, right? It's kind of like you want to outpace Ethereum. Sometimes, right? When we looked at the Bloomberg article last week, basically Ethereum does a 1.3x compared to Bitcoin. So it does a little bit better than Bitcoin uh, most of the time. I would say BNB is kind of similar like that to Ethereum. Maybe it's like compared to Bitcoin, it's like a 1.4x. So it's a little bit more um, than Ethereum. And then we have, uh, I would say the next one on the list would be Cardano here, right? There's enough going on with Cardano that if Charles Hodgkinson hadn't actually come out with some of the DeFi layers here with Cardano, I actually hadn't delivered any of that in the last bull market, I would say I would count Cardano dead. But because Cardano actually has a lot of stuff going for it in building, um, actively building in this bear market, right, it's probably going to survive. Dogecoin, whether you like it or not, is going to survive. I think all of these altcoins, if we do get Bitcoin going back below um, that 16.5 area and especially that 15.5 area, you're going to see the potential for these altcoins to drop about 50% or more in the market, right? Um, so just be very, very careful with um, when to get into altcoins, but it is kind of good to kind of put on the tabs of, okay, what layer ones might I want to get? Um, <laughs> if you're into Dogecoin and you're into meme coins, I mean, Viva La Doge, I love it. I love the community and everything. It's just not uh, an investment that I, I want to choose as a long-term hold. I'll use it as a short-term speculation when its price is moving. Um, but you could also go into Shiba Inu because they are technically having an ecosystem now as well. Um, God save us all. Um, but you can go to Polygon Matic, right? I would say this is a pretty safe layer, uh, kind of like the, mm, how do I want to put it? Like, it's not a corporate coin itself, but it tends to, it has been attracting a lot of corporate projects, right? So I would say Matic is kind of your mm, corporate Ethereum layer because it's basically what everybody's going to use as your scaling layer for Ethereum, right? Um, but it is interesting. That's kind of what's giving it the corporations like Disney and Nike that are related to it are giving it a little bit of credibility here at, at the current state in the market. And now those ones, I would say, based on market cap are probably your safest where you're at now. Now, the other one I would add in there, obviously, is Hex. It's just not properly listed on uh, by market cap on these sites. Right. But Hex has been uh, building the Pulse Chain ecosystem around it. Right. We're in it for the tech, right, guys? Right? No, we're in it for the tokenomics. We're, you know, it's going to be built extremely well. We already saw that Hex was built extremely well, and Hex didn't have to re, uh, basically do anything brand new, right? It basically built on top of Ethereum. It built it upon an existing layer, which is exactly what Pulse Chain is doing. So that's another one um, to look out for there. And then if we scroll down here, okay, the next big layer one on the list is Solana. Now the question becomes, <laughs> do you want to take a stab at this? I would say... I'm either going to wait for one of two things in the market, right? One, 
the market to bleed down in Bitcoin to go back down towards 15,500. If that happens, I'm just going to wait for cheap, cheap, cheap prices because I don't need to buy Solana. I'd rather have Ethereum for the most part, but then I might take some Ethereum and put that into Solana if the market improves. So I'd be looking for a, just a, a deathly cheap ass price um, for Solana that might be like anywhere between three to five dollars or one to five dollars. That mark there might be a time where you want to get in. Um, but until that time, right, I'm going to wait. Now, if Bitcoin does go up and we actually have a low in, then I'm going to wait because I want Ethereum, my, my Ethereum and Bitcoin, and then I'm going to wait till Solana starts outpacing and then, right, I might get in. But this one is going to be more like, hey, it could die and it could go to zero, especially with the negativity we, we will have at the end of the year with Sam Bankman Free's trial in October. Um, that's going to hit this hard again. Um, but it can be something that you can trade or you can swing trade over a couple uh, cycles here. Um, Litecoin, I would say, is going to do well in 2023. All right. So going into its halving, which is in the summer, it's going to do well. Um, but this is one where I'm like, OK, I'll hold it for this year, maybe uh, a portion and, and gain, try to gain more Bitcoin, maybe try to gain a little bit more Ethereum, but it's not going to outpace too crazily, I don't think. And then, um, you know, quick flip it back into those. Um, Polkadot, I do think survives pretty well, um, simply because uh, a lot of the inve uh, VCs that, that Gavin Wood has, there are long term uh, and he's long term as well. It's kind of like, I would say you can kind of view Polkadot as like an earlier stage Cardano that's actually getting things done in the early days. Um, so that's very similar. Then I already mentioned Shiba Inu kind of being one if you're along with the Dogecoin there. But then after that, it starts to get more sparse, right? You don't really see so many layer ones. You do see Avalanche and Cosmos here that I think are going to do really well. But again, I think those can wait for a while because I think Ethereum is going to hold up better and do better than them um, for, you know, uh, at least the next couple of months. And then, yeah, you really don't have much on layer one stuff that has ecosystems around it until you get down to phantom i believe and if i go down all the way down to phantom where is phantom on the on the list here today it's prob there it is number 61 right so you have to go quite a ways to have another layer when i would say phantom is kind of uh, a little bit of a sleeping giant here um because it is lower in market cap than a lot of things so once it does get going again um and it gets kind of um, to be the darling of crypto for even a short period of time, right? It can pump maybe a little bit harder than other things, although it will have resist more resistance to the upside because it has lost uh, a couple support areas. But anywhere around 20 cents or lower for Phantom can be, can be a really good buy. So those would be the ones, right, that I'd mainly be focusing on. Now, anything outside of that, right, those ones, that's way more than enough to chew on, right, because you're basically going, okay, I got my Bitcoin, I got my Ethereum, that's 60% of the portfolio, then maybe I got uh, an extra you know, 20% that I'm playing around with here long-term, and I'm going to put, you know, maybe 7.5% in three projects. Maybe I put some in Hex, maybe I put some in Phantom, and, you know, maybe I put one in, you know, Matic. Maybe I put it in Polkadot. Maybe I put it in Kusama. Maybe I put it in uh, Cardano. Maybe I, you know, uh, wait for a new project to come out, or maybe I put it in a new trend like GameFi, right? I think GameFi is probably... Um, going to be one of the hottest uh, trends in the next cycle um, that people aren't yet paying as much attention to as they should be. So these are all kind of like broad thoughts of what we have.